All right, it is time for donations and deliveries again. This is going to be a fairly meager month because I've downscaled my spending. I can't buy $25,000 Land Rovers every month or $20,000 Argos. But anyway, this month starts off with some notepads. These might seem insignificant, but they've become very hard to find. So uh, I finally found some. I use them up the top of my desk here all the time. I also found batteries that are not covered in uh, a bittering coating or in impossible to open packages. The packaging laws in Australia have changed with these recently, um, although the marking is about the same. But these are the multi-packs got hard to find. These have got batteries for all the oddball things that I keep running into and the AG13s that are used in so many things these days. So uh, anyway, let's move on. Another donation are some floppy disks. Now, uh, some of you may or may not have ever seen these. I have some oddball stuff. Now, these are 256K discs. And they are eight inches across. Not to be confused with a five and a quarter inch, which looks visually fairly similar, but it's uh, considerably smaller. And I have fairly large hands. So let's find a, uh, a size reference here. Um, what the dust off it. This is a three and a quarter inch. Now, there, oh, sorry, this is a three and a half inch. Five and a quarters are about here. I have a brand new sealed box of those somewhere. I can't find them. Uh, but yeah, these were the IBM ones, and at 48 TPI and double-sided, that makes it about 250K for the disc. These were probably the highest density discs of their time. Um, quite useful, but not anymore. We used to have the whole machine that had these. It used to have two drives, and one would be the boot disc, and the other was the data disc. Uh, but since uh, everything's been moved and everything like that, I think it was a 40-character wide screen, and I think it was about the standard, um, I think it was just about 12 inches high, and it was about 6 inches wide. It was a really weird aspect ratio, really thin green screen CRT. I don't remember what it was for, but we did have the entire machine. It uh, probably would have been worth a mint nowadays, but that was, well, 30 odd years ago. So um, I don't know where it is now. But interesting donation. So uh, we'll see you uh, when something else arrives. Oh, and just for a matter of comparison, while I have my box of floppy disks out, these are CF2 floppy disks. These go with the Amstrad uh, CPC6128, of which uh, I am working on backing up to uh, three and a half inch. But uh, yeah, these are also another oddball format. And in any case, I have a functioning compact to fit those, or sorry, the um, Amstrad. I get so many of these things confused these days. But anyway, We'll uh, see you in the next one. All right, we've had some uh, donations here and uh, let's see what we can start with. This is a uh, PlayStation controller. I have lost track of the whole PlayStation phenomenon since the late 90s. Um, oh, it does have an on button. I don't know how I turned this on. This was donated by Waze and uh, after he uh, heard about the video that probably hasn't gone public yet, where I modified a classic Xbox controller um, to USB and he's donated this. This has this little extra auxiliary, auxiliary add-on here, which if I'm gentle enough, um, that adds on to the back of it as well. And uh, this apparently works with Bluetooth. So uh, we're going to try and pair this with my Apprentice's PC, give us some more controls. I don't know how to turn the thing on and off. I don't even know how to put it in pairing mode yet. Something I'm going to have to learn. Um, I kind of left consoles behind a long time ago. And uh, how is that meant to go on again? Ah, that is flexible. That makes total sense. All right. So I think that all goes in here. Uh, this was briefly demonstrated to me. Um, I think I can double tap it. When it's on, it brings up a screen with different configurations for these auxiliary toggle buttons. So... Uh, useful stuff my apprentice is probably going to enjoy this and uh we'll see how we go all right some more deliveries and uh it's gearing up to be a sunny day winter is not being very wintry at the moment 
and uh, I've got a little bit of time off the road, which is a little frustrating, but that means I've got some bits and pieces to buy to service vehicles. Epoxy is one of them things, and no, I'm not going to glue body panels back together with it. Just the uh, fiberglass roof box. So we've got epoxy resin here. What else did we have in here? I got a roll end of three millimeter twin core red and black, double insulated marine cable. That's a roll end of it. Uh, what did we get here? I got a three amp Dura or PowerTech uh, solar regulator. That's going to go on a 20 watt solar panel that's going to uh, keep the ambulance battery topped up during the dead time or downtime. I got a bearing packing tool, a grease packer. Um, handy thing when you've got a lot of bearings to do, like the 20 that I've got to do. Um, what else do we have? Some uh, industrial degreaser. We got two tins of that. We've got a bag off to the side here. And we got, uh, I went looking for wheel bearing grease. I found some pen right stuff. A couple of cartridges of high temp wheel bearing grease. And uh, an Anderson plug. And I have an air operated uh, grease gun that was given to me uh, as a donation on this channel a while back. Um, thank you to Terry for that one. And uh, I'm going to chuck these things in the air operated thing. So uh, when I'm packing wheel bearings, the, the idea with this is you put your wheel bearing between these two cones and put this piece down the middle and you pump grease in and it packs it perfectly. Um, so yeah, I can put my wheel bearings in this and uh, use an air operated grease gun and save myself a lot of time. And uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, problems with my hand. Anyway, that's uh, what we've got for the moment. And uh, we'll be looking at more sometime in the near future. We'll check in then. All right, so there's a uh, donation has showed up. What is this? I don't know what this is. It's, uh, it's a Minecraft something. Um, Creepy Graffiti Black Tote. Is it a tote bag? Um, all right. See what we get here. Well, that was a fail. We'll just do it the hard way. Find out what this looks like. Okay, so yeah, it's a more robust sort of shopping bag. Actually, today I've got to do a trip on the bus, so this might actually be useful. Um, I've got a three month license suspension to sit through. This is from an EB game, so this probably is my uh, financial manager who did some shopping. They often give things out like this for free, so uh, if you make a purchase. So yeah, alright, not too bad. Made in China still, but uh, officially licensed. So not bad. I'll uh, tell this to the people on anarchy.cx. Anyway, we'll see you when the next delivery or donation arrives. Alright, we've had some more donations. One of which was my favourite bag of chockies. Definitely going to get into those. More channel specific, we have a pile of stuff. Um, what did we get? We got some uh, bus bars, some small ones here. Got a uh, 12 mil, or sorry, a 12 volt, three millimeter green LED bezel. So there's a resistor in line with that. We've got 10 of the, um, what are these? 5.5, 2.1 mil DC barrel jacks, I guess. And uh, some two mil, Two core. Uh, we're going to use that for some camera upgrades. Oh, and one last thing we did find is a uh, blade fuse holder. Fairly decent molded one. It's not loose and wobbly like the others. This feels very robust. So, uh, and what grade wire do we have on it? We have 12 gauge. I guess that's what it is. And there's a reason for all of this. All right, we have a delivery from uh, Scorp Tech. Let's see what this is. Let's move around here a little bit. Uh, let's have a look. Try not to uh, cut my hands up. I'm always nervous with these knives because they are wildly sharp. And they say a sharp knife is less likely to cut you. That's because it usually requires less force to operate the knife. Here is our delivery here. This is an NVMe uh, enclosure from Simplecom. Uh, and I need more knives to get into it. I'm going in the bottom. Going in via the rear. This is Chinese made, as like half the world is these days. 
sure that's by design. Bit of manual, some USB C to C and USB 3 leads. Here's our enclosure in plastic. Okay. It looks like we have a thermal pad here as well. And um, I have an NVMe to put in here. We'll see what it's like. I think that's the... Oh, that's a nice little opening thing. Several mounting holes. This is a plastic tray. This is an aluminium thing. Looks like this is just a little locking thread in here. No screws. And uh, let's see how it fits a couple of the type of SSDs I have. Let's have a look here. I have... Um, an M and B key SSD and I have one of these so this is an NVMe but this is supposed to support multiple keyings and SATA SSDs so we'll try out both of these and see if it works okay we're starting with a small one here it slots in push that down and this is just like a little cam lock almost um, it looks like I have to extract that this um, looks kind of complicated, a bit hard to see, but I think you put it in halfway there and then rotate 90 degrees to lock it. Yes, it does. Okay. So, it would appear that we need to slot this in like so. And hook that into the slot on the top there. Rotate down and then turn 90 degrees. Alright, that seems to work. Let's see if it actually connects. Now, I'm not going to use the supplied cable. I have a USB-C cable here. But it lights up and I hear a ding-dong saying it's come up. Okay, we'll see if we get a connection. All right, well, this first one seems to come up and we've got 100 meg used, 117 gig free. That would make sense. There's already a partition on this. So now to remove things, I think it's simply turn back 90 degrees and lift up. And it comes out. Now it's important to know it. this is an M and B keyed NVMe. Let's see if this works. Now this one's from a used Acer and it's a 512 gig I think which uh, obviously adjusts for the file system space but it does work and this was an out of an old Acer laptop. Well I have to say I am damn impressed with this thing. I uh, hooked it up with the USB C to C uh, with my phone and backed up everything on here in a couple of minutes um, and that was about 330 meg a second plugged it into the computer with SSDs and I got nearly 700 meg per second okay we've had some unremarkable deliveries had some saline to top up the first aid kit but these are slightly bigger ones um, I can't understate the usefulness of this enough um, even though it's only technically uh, sterile salt water these things also unremarkable, but when you've got a band-aid in the field, these particular band-aids are magic, and especially the big wide ones as well. Anyway, um, measuring cups. Also very underrated, but things that you'll never actually go without, um, especially ones that have got multiple measuring. Um, the main reason for these things being handy is uh, there's a lot of stuff I do where I want to carry multiple measuring cups and this one actually does the job of all of them in one unit. I like anything that does multiple jobs in one unit. All right, this one's a field delivery. Uh, thank you to the electronic barn for these ones. I've got a 12 volt fast charger because my console one is not working anymore. And I got a properly specced USB type C lead that can do fast charging and has all the pins connected. There's a lot of different standards of these. You've got to be sure you don't get caught out. Well, another unexpected donation landing on my uh, doorstep is some uh, 60th, uh, 60 years Aussie Disposals playing cards. Uh, interesting little pack of these. Um, be interesting, but they are more or less a standard set of playing cards. So, interesting stuff. Let's see what else we get. Alright, we have another um, donation from the senior advisor here. This one's... Um, a wheelchair. I've got a good kitchen knife that's also a wheelchair that's been around for about 10 years now. These ones were going on special and the stay sharp ones are kind of handy even though I do have a sharpener that does probably a better job. But uh, these are nifty to have around. They're a fairly useful blade in that they've got a, uh, a nice flat section here, a curve and a point. All of this is handy for stuff 
Ideally, I like having a flat edge here and a longer rounding on here. I can't remember what the bl blade profile is called, but uh, this is handy for when the other one's in the uh, dishwasher. And uh, fortunately with these, you don't need a pair of scissors to get into them because they have cotton onto the fact that the tamper-proof packages are too tamper-proof. So you can just rip these open. We'll get this out and have a look. One thing I uh, don't like about the marketing here is this little bulge here that's got nothing in it. It makes you think you're getting something for nothing. And uh, we'll have a look at how sharp this is. Let's have a look here. I'll take some of the packet here. And it's quite sharp. So uh, factory edge, not bad. And uh, I don't have any grip today because of hand sanitizer. And we see the little ceramic sharpening elements. They're basically the same as the little hand sharpeners you get that have got three stages on them. But that's just got the ceramic edge on there just to keep it maintained. And uh, this can go into this very nicely. Well, I'm in the middle of vehicle works and uh, had another donation. This is a uh, Mido had uh, showed up and uh, got me some 30 mil stuff so we can get the radius arms off uh, or break them trying. We'll see what happens. All right, on the deliveries now, we have a 30 inch half inch drive uh, breaker bar because the nylock nuts on the radius arms on this thing will not come off. So we're not asking anymore. We're using something serious. This may call for a cheaty tube as well. Also got a shallow 30 mil socket and we've got some um, M20 nuts here, nylock nuts to replace them. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to break them nuts off. Anyway, let's see what else shows up. Okay, we've had another delivery that came in this plastic bag. Um, and at first glance, this might not seem terribly amazing. 650 nanometer, five milliwatt laser module. But some of you might notice the anomaly with a font in this. Um, now I had to do a little bit of redacting here because this actually had my whole home address. This came from my uh, senior technician. Now uh, a five milliwatt laser might not seem like a great thing these days, but um, given that this was from 1999 and I actually remember um, some of these actually coming in, um, I would have, it wouldn't have been too terribly old at this point in time. Um, but the dog silencer kit, he's still got that. And $43 in 1999 was a significant price. And same for a laser module being $8 back then, is still reasonably expensive by today's standards. And this is still stapled on here. I should actually see if this works. Um, this has a significantly better heatsink. This is also, also from a time where I had to mail order high intensity LEDs. And by high intensity, I mean like 30 millicandel. And they pulled about 40 and 50 milliamps to run that. So early in the stage of laser diodes and all that sort of stuff. So uh, let's get this out of the bag and see if it works. Uh, but before we do that, we should read the whole little bit here. And it says, uh, warnings about lasers and above a certain require, power level require licensing. So lasers above one milliwatt. Okay. And semiconductors and power heads and gas tubes and argon tubes and laser light with high voltages so there's all the the warning um sheet that comes with it too here we go we even have a uh, a diagram here so it's how to connect the link and how to add a button to it that's pretty nifty i think i didn't come with a button i think i've got a couple of those but um for operation at a high voltage add a series resistor so 100 ohm for 9 volts 150 ohm for 12 volts. I may have that somewhere. So we need three to five volts. We can probably handle that for my test supply. All right, this took a little bit of trickery. I did warm the iron up, but uh, I found I can fire it up like this. And it's actually a little bit brighter than the average laser, I think. It does seem to be a little bit better than some of the ones I've used before. But this will certainly be interesting to play with. It's a five milliwatt. Still legal in today's day and age, so uh, yeah, this could be interesting. In another bag here, I have some 40% DEET, always useful. And I found a different supplier of the dehydrated meals that has some ones that I can't normally get. Family honey soy chicken, porridge supreme, 
spag bowl, which is kind of a gourmet spag bowl, beef teriyaki, and um, lamb fettuccine, uh, roast lamb and vegetables, and the chicken carbonara. That one was re uh, recommended to me by my cameraman. These are good ones. So uh, now, the difference, I think, BCF charged me like 12 bucks for these. Aussie Disposals charge um, like $17.99 for them. So these are the ones you're a bit harder to get hold of, but they're a bit pricier too. Either way, um, we're going to be outfitted once I buy some ration packs. But anyway, um, let's see what else shows up. It is getting towards the end of the month. So um, I think we'll be uh, running short on stuff soon. Yeah, in amongst here is an RCD, which is kind of handy. This is a gift that you wouldn't normally expect to get on a birthday, but this is still very handy. Um, I was hoping for an inline one, but this is still useful. I've got a couple that have blown out their MOV, so that'll go straight into service. Now, somebody who really knows me um, got me one of these. And in fact, they might have got me two of them. And they, they know I, I have an affinity for guinea pigs. So, uh, yeah. These guys are quite realistic. Not sure what I'm really going to do with these, but uh, I do appreciate the sentiment. And I think they have little ears in here. Look at that. Little ears. The attention to detail is uh, admirable. In any case, let's see what else we have. Alright, we've had a few more deliveries. This is a fairly lengthy one. Let's see what we got. We've got some marine grease, some of this stuff. Now, I use Castrol Spherol Ultra Tac 2. I can't find it anywhere. So, uh, basically, it's a marine grade lithium grease. This, I'm hoping the Penrite stuff's going to be the next best thing. Um, but I use this in my Argo, um, particularly because it has a, a tacky, it becomes tacky in the contact with water. Um, and so, when I'm using the prop shaft uh, bearings that are on the outside of my eight wheel drive amphibious ATV, this sort of stuff is what keeps the water out and keeps the bearings from rusting. Now, we have a whole bunch of things else in here. Um, we have some frozen meals. We have some cooked or dehydrated meals. We have some cooked breakfast, some apple pie, um, beef bergen on, all the, all the favourites. Um, another apple pie. These are the big two-person servings. Cooked breakfast again. I love those ones. And we've got another cooked breakfast. Um, another beef burger on. Enough to share around. What else did we get? Um, some universal joints because I destroyed one of these um, trying to get a uh, 30 mil nut off a radius arm bush or a radius arm. Um, now, I don't like to be specific about when my birthday happens. But it happened last month, or maybe the month before, you don't know. I've been sitting on stuff for quite a while. So what did we get? One of the things I got was this little uh, portable mobile phone holder. Somebody who had no idea what to buy from me, and that's not surprising. But this is going to be handy, and I'll show you why. Now, I've just sw swapped to using this. This is what I've been using for ages to hold my phone while I record these sort of videos. This is basically uh, a tripod mount for a DSLR camera with a bunch of blue tack. This thing may serve to be a little bit more adjustable and a little bit more useful for the job. So useful present. Well, we're going to step outside for a bit and uh, explain that this pretty well ends donations and deliveries for August. We're going to move on to the next month fairly soon because stuff will be showing up. And yes, many thanks for the things that were donated and uh, the presents and whatnot. They had to sit in the queue for a little while and I had to not tell people about them because I don't like to reveal what month my birthday is in. There's obvious reasons I'm sure many of you guys can speculate about. And in any case, uh, one thing I am going to have to look for a donation for is something to help clean up the paintwork on the side of this vehicle after I've scratched it with trees. And in any case, we'll see you in the next one and I hope it was mildly entertaining. I'll go looking for some other content stuff right away.